Good morning, classmate. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, today we are going to talk about the modern fables. So, um, before we are going on further, the modern fables. Let's discuss first the classic fables. So, in the class, the fable, classic fables are short stories that often use animals as characters or anthropomorphism. So. It uses animals so that it can connect us to the nature. So next is it, it illustrates a lesson or a moral. And next, imaginary and fun stories. So uh, I know that it is not first time you have heard of a boss. And um, I know uh, uh, that those are the uh, basic things that you can encounter or you can observe in this classical fables. So, and also we also know Aesop, right? He is uh, one of the very known when it comes to the fables. So, Aesop is the most famous author and collectors of fables. His best known fables in English was published since 1484. So, next, those are the examples of the writings came from Aesop's fables. So here are your examples, the lion and the mouse, the hare and the tortoise, the ant and the grasshopper, the mouse, the frog, and the hawk. So let's define, uh, this time let's define the characteristic of fables. So, those are brief story. The main characters are usually animals. One characteristic usually has a bad face that leads to his or her downfall. So, in a modern fables, or in a fables, uh, we can easily um, found out or detect who is the antagonist or the protagonist in this story. So, next. Teacher teaches a lesson that we adopt by listener and readers, especially to the children. Characters are fictional, so most characters are fictional, so uh, since um, the animals in the story are talking. And uh, usually have no more than two or three characters. So sometimes it plays only for, uh, between the antagonist and the protagonist. And last, written to entertain the readers. It entertains the children and it gives a lesson in its last part. So, uh, this time I'm going to um, read to you a, sto a story came from um, H.A. Ray, which is entitled Curious George. Curious George by H. A. Ray. This is George. He lived in Africa. He was a very good little monkey and always very curious. One day, George saw a man. He had a large yellow straw hat. The man saw George too. What a nice little monkey, he thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground. On, and of course, George was curious. He came down from the tree to look at the large yellow hat. The hat had been on the man's head. George thought it would be nice to have it on his own head. He picked it up and put it on. The hat covered George's head. He couldn't see. The man picked him up quickly and put him into a bug. George was cool. The man with the big yellow hat put George into a little boat, and a sailor rowed them both across the water to a big ship. George was sad, but he was still a little curious. On a big ship, things began to happen. The man took off the bug. George sat on a little stool, and the man said, George, I am going to take you to a big zoo. In a big city, you will like it there. Now run along and play, but don't get into trouble. 
George promised to be a good, but it is easy for a little monkey to forget. On the deck, he found some seagulls. He wondered how they could fly. He was very curious. Finally, he had to try. It looked easy, but... Oh, what happened? First this, and then this. Bluff. Where is George? The sailor looked and looked. At last, they saw him, struggling in the water, and almost all tired out. The man overboard! The sailors cried, and they threw him a life belt. George caught in it and held on. At last, he was safe on board. After that, George was more careful to be a good monkey, until at last, the long trip was over. George said goodbye to the kind sailors, and he and the man with the yellow hat walked off the ship on the shore and into the city to the man's house. After a good meal and a good pipe, George felt very tired. He crawled into bed and fell asleep at once. The next morning, the man telephoned the zoo. George watched him. He saw so fascinated that the man went away. George was curious. He wanted to telephone too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What fun! Ding-a-ling-a-ling, ding a ling a ling George had telephoned the fire station. The fireman rushed to the telephone. Hello, hello, they said. But there was no answer. Then they looked for a signal on a big map that shows where the telephone call had come from. They didn't know it was George. They thought it was a real fire. Hurry, hurry, hurry! The fireman jumped onto the fire engines and on the hook, and ladders. Ding dong, ding dong, everyone out of the way. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The fireman rushed into the house. They opened the door, no fire, only a naughty little monkey. Oh, catch him, catch him, they cried. George tried to run away. He almost did, but he got caught in the telephone wire and bluff. A thin fireman caught one arm and fat fireman caught the other. You look, you fooled the fireman department, they said. We will have to shut you up and where you can do any more harm. They looked him away and shut him in a prison. George wanted to get out. He climbed up to the window to try the bars. Just then the man, the watchman came in. He got on the wooden bed to catch George. He was too big and heavy. The bed tipped up. The watchman fell over and quickly as lightning, George ran out through the open door. He hurried through the building and out of, onto the roof. And then he was lucky to be a monkey. Out he walked on the telephone wires, quickly and quietly over the guard's head. George walked away. He was free. Down the street, Outside the prison wall stood a balloon man. A little girl bought a balloon for her brother. George what watch. He was curious again. He felt he must have a bright red balloon. He reached ov over and tried to help himself but instead of the balloon, the whole bunch broke loose. In an instant, the wind whisked them all away. And with them went George, holding tight with the both heads. Up, up, he sailed higher and higher. The house looked like toy houses and the, and the people like dolls. George was frightened. He held on a very tight. At first, the wind blew in a great gust. Then it quieted. Finally, it stopped blowing altogether. George was very tired. Down, down, he went bump. Onto the top of the traffic light, everyone was surprised. The traffic got all mixed up. George didn't know what to do. And then, he heard someone call, George! He
he looked down and saw his friend, the man with the big yellow hat. George was very happy. The man was happy too. George slid down the post and the man with the big yellow hat put him under his arm. arm. Then he paid the balloon man for all the balloons. And then George and the man climbed into the car. At last, away they went to the zoo. What a nice place for George to live. The end. So, um, as, you, as you observe from the story, it, the story entitled The Curious George is a uh, very good example of modern fables. So, I read to you the example of the uh, modern fables so that we can compare what is the difference or how they differ from um, modern and classic fables. So, now let's see. Modern fables, like the traditional fables, are brief story with moral. So, uh, as you observe, it is also a very short story. So, next, characters are often people rather than animals, and they usually more complicated. So, in the story, um, you can see there are other uh, characters, the person, and uh, there are a lot of person appears in the story, which is changed, not unlike. Um, not unlike in the uh, classical fables, that animals are uh, placed the characters more rather than a person. So, next is modern fables must be like appear since time is to present. So, uh, we doesn't mean that modern, modern means uh, it appears or occurs these days, but then uh, modern fables occurs or written. Um, since 90s and change it uh, in some characteristics. So next is the characters are given human qualities. So that is um, uh, more likely to uh, classical fables. And the theme that readers have to determine on their own. Uh, on their own. So as we observe that um, and I think that a modern fables uh, plays different roles in, in terms of uh, giving a moral and um, theme in the story since it um, gives us some hidden, uh, hidden morals that are hard to identify. But still, we can still uh, pick some lesson out of it. Next, now we are going to discuss the known author of modern fables, and those are Dr. Seuss. Book are considered modern day fables. For example, Year in the Turtle is one of the most uh, uh, known uh, modern fables, and this fable is about the right to freedom to all creatures. And next, George Orwell's Animal Farm is a more complex fable like book. It's also about freedom, especially independent uh, thought, truth, and justice. So the theme is very di different um, when it compares to um, Pascal, since it is now um, more political and um, it changed the perception of uh, the real meaning of fables that it is to entertain only the children. So next is uh, Peter, Rab Peter Rabbit of uh, Beatrix's father and Curious George, as I read a while ago, as uh, by Margaret Key. So that's all for uh, my report. Thank you for listening, uh, everyone. Good day.